Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome, welcome to the stream. Today we are going to be flying some planes. I like to fly planes. I'm going to turn this down just a tad. And I'm also going to make sure that that gets shut the hell up because for some reason it did not mute my uh, stream preview. Thank you so much, Twitch, for being a hot piece of garbage. Okay, so now that I'm done uh, making fun of the people who pay my paychecks, let's start uh, looking at the, at the simulator. Obviously, we're back in X-Plane. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of a comparison. Last week, we flew uh, Frankfurt to Amsterdam Schiphol in the A320neo, uh, the A32NX project um, in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This week, we are flying the exact same route, or at least planning the exact same route. And today, I assume we're actually going to be able to fly it, where... Uh, last week, we had to do a lot of um, accounting for the weirdness of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, so today, I'm hoping we actually get to fly the correct route. Um, so here we are. X-Plane 11, Polis A319, study level aircraft. And we're going to get this thing flying. We're going to head to Amsterdam. How's that sound to everybody? Hopefully you will enjoy it. I know I am probably going to enjoy it a lot more than I did uh, Microsoft Flight. Now, let me be clear. I talk a lot of shit about Microsoft Flight. But I want to be absolutely clear about it. I'm not mad at Microsoft Flight. Microsoft Flight does exactly what it said on the box. Um... I think it's a good simulator, but there's nothing in the sandbox yet. Not for me. The uh, the general aviation aircraft are absolutely phenomenal. The simulator itself is very, very detailed. I'm very, very happy with it. Once we get some good aircraft in it, and once we can fix pushback, it will be a top-notch simulator. We're just not there yet. It will get there. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying it's not ready. Uh, and apparently they rushed a, so a Sobo a lot on it. And they were not quite ready to go yet. But let's get this thing started. We are not flying in Microsoft Flight today. We are flying in X-Plane 11. Something I am very familiar with. So let's get our batteries on. One and two. Ground control. Um, external power on. Fuel pumps all off, and then we get to load our fuel. So we get to go to our Tolus ISCS, and we get to load, looks like, 5328. So I'm going to go ahead and do 54. And then our passenger loading, we need 131 passengers. And... Our zero fuel weight is going to be 56.1. All right, so let's do 1,000 here and 1,200. Which gives 56.1. Uh, and then let's adjust this to try and get about 30, 29.6. All right, apply those. Perfect. <clears throat> Pardon me. All right, so now that our fuel's been loaded, we're all loaded up. APU fire test. That is a positive fire test. Okay. So APU master switch on, then we will wait until we see flap open. Meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and turn these up. Flap open, uh, you don't have to do that. It will start if you do it, like, right now. The problem is it won't have tested... Uh, to see whether or not the the there's I think it's a oil check that it does during that time, but it does some self diagnostics and uh, you don't want to start it unless you're absolutely sure it's safe. All right, so APU master switch on, APU start on. 
Uh, cockpit lights and McDo's have been adjusted. I'm not going to worry about the uh, co-pilot side. You can worry about that. Flap lever should be matched to the E-cam. That's fully retracted. Same thing with the ground spoil uh, with the speed brake and ground spoilers. Uh, probe window heat is not needed. APU bleed when available will come on. Air conditioning panel, no white. Looks like we're available. Air conditioning panel, no white. Cross bleed set to auto. Uh, air conditioner temp as required. Generator 1 and 2 fault light are on. External power can come off. Electrical panel, all other lights off. And ventilation panel, all lights off. Preliminary pre-flight procedures complete. Let's go ahead and get our adheres going. Align on battery. And what this does is it's testing to make sure that the adheres will function just fine if there is an electrical failure on the battery. Um, so we want to make sure that we wait until that disappears before we go ahead and push to the next part of our checklist. That is going to be strobe lights on, wing lights on, Navin logo. I'm going to put it on system two today. Seat belts on, uh, no smoking set auto, and emergency exit lights on. Landing elevation should be set auto. That it is. Pack flow is going to be normal today. Fuel pumps can all come on. Engine one and two fire test. Nice and loud fire test today. Perfect. Now normally I would have to hit that while also looking at some of these things like this ecam. But since I know that those things are all gonna work because I have no failures turned on, not too worried about just hearing the dings. All right, so radio three, two, and one. And then we get to configure our McDo's. Data, GPS monitor. Initialization, we are going to be going from EDDF to EHAM. Flight number today is Delta Lima Hotel to Uniform Victor. This is Lufthansa. We're at 50.018. So we need to 018. And then our longitude is 833.4. We go up. 833.4. Perfect. The line IRS, our cost index today is going to be 40. I haven't seen that in a while. What's our uh, top of climb? Our cruise altitude is going to be 240. That's surprisingly low. That's probably why our, um, why our cost index is so high. Go ahead and grab that wind request and head over to the flight plan. I'm going to go ahead and close that. All right, so we are taking off via the, I think we're departing 07 right via Maroon 9 Delta. Probably won't be, oh, we actually do have Maroon 9 Delta. And we need no transitions. Like plan. Perfect. Insert. And then from Maroon, we're going to go on Airways. We're going to go Yankee 152 to RPEG. And we're going to jump on Zulu 850. To Hotel Mike Mike. You want to jump on Tango 281. Norku. Gonna arrive at Eham. So like we're arriving three six right on the Norku two Alpha. Shouldn't be a via no. And no transition. Okay. 
Anyways, this is where we gotta start deleting these manuals. EDDF. All right, everything looks good there. Uh, I don't have a route planned to our alternate today, so I'm not really going to worry about it. Um, especially since this is a simulator, I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, secondary flight plan, let's also choose... Oh no, not activate secondary, no! I'm gonna activate this flight plan. Go to our secondary flight plan. I think it's the same. We're going to plan also to depart the uh, one. You know, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not going to worry about it. Not today. All right. So we're going to go to... Uh, what? Did it just plug everything in? Oh, I hope you don't do that. Why are you doing that? Oh, you are doing that. Why are you doing that? I don't want you to do... Ah, but you're not quite right. Five six point one twenty nine point six. Why are you negative? Hold up. What? Why do you show so much distance? shouldn't I'm very very confused why is this showing such a high distance it really should not this is not correct That is definitely not correct. Not 3,293 miles. Um, I did just update this, so that could be part of the issue. But my total distance... Definitely not that much. My my total burn. Um, my total burn should be two point three tons. So I'm just gonna ignore this for now. I'm not gonna ignore it forever. I'm gonna be watching very closely what the plane is doing because these these distances do not add up. It definitely doesn't add up. So anyway, we're going to go to... And it be... We've already done, yes? Alright, so we're going to go to performance. And we are plugging in 151. 51. One five one for V rotate. V two is one five three. Flaps are gonna be two slash down. Zero point one. Flex temp is sixty five. 
And here we're gonna go to... Yeah. Perfect. Got the flight plan. McDo configuration is complete. Pre-flight procedures are complete. Time for pushback and start, which we're not gonna need a pushback. So altimeter set. Let's go ahead and uh, look at our METAR. Currently, we are looking at two and H one zero one seven. Weird altitude is going to be five thousand feet, according to our trip kit. Uh, Initial climb clearance is 5,000 feet. And it looks like that's all the way to Maroon. And then we'll clear ourselves up to our cruise altitude. All right, so that's altimeter set. Flight directors both on. FCU speed is dashed, heading dashed. Altitude set to ATC cleared. Anti-skid nose wheel steering is on. Switching panel all normal. Transponder, we're not going to worry about our squawk code. Beacon can come on. Let's go ahead and turn this on. Alright. Engine start procedures. Ignition, engine 2 start. We're going to watch this until we get 20% in one rotation. A little different than I've done before, but it's how we're doing it now. Make sure that I'm not missing things going on in chat. It looks like I absolutely am. Wait. Nope. No, I'm not. Cool. Just want to make sure. So I'm over here looking at my flight plan, looking at my charts, and I'm not paying attention to chat. Well, I am, but it's on my tablet, and my tablet hasn't shown anybody seeing anything yet. Um, that's not normal. That's an untextured fuel truck. Huh, that's, that's weird. That exists. Okay, that's 20% in two positive start. Engine one starting. Now, the cool thing that I got to do this week is, um... Poscon brought some ATC online in Atlanta. I got to fly this bitch online. I was so happy. Oh, it was so fun. I actually got to communicate with ATC in an appropriate manner without having to deal with VFR rules. To be honest, IFR, so much easier to deal with communications for. Hey. Engine one, and one rotation, almost there. And 20%, that's a positive start. Engine one, engine mode back to normal. APU bleed off, ground spoilers armed, flap set. Flight controls, we're going to trim down 0 0.1. Engine and wing anti-ice is not required. APU master can come off. Taxi checklist, we can check. Uh, nose light to taxi. Parking brake off. Go ahead and off chocks. Parking brake off. We're going to run our elapsed time. Flight control check, full left, full right, full up, full down. 
Flight controls checked. FMA is set to nav and climb. Blue. Auto brake is set max. And on the terrain on our ND. I'm not hearing those cabin chimes. Off config check. Ecam no blue. Cam no blue. And that's our taxi checklist completed. Now we're just waiting until we are almost at the runway. And this should not exist. Taxiway Sierra should be a little bit lower than this, a little further south. That should be Sierra, but this taxiway should not exist. On my charts, we are taxiing across, across the grass. Um, I don't like these being here. Definitely should not be. Alright, we should be coming up on Sierra 29. Like there. I'm gonna hang a hard right. We're going to go ahead and stop here. I think this is an ILS hold barrier. We're going to go ahead and turn our transponder to TARA. Check our brakes. All looks good. Engine mode as required. Runway turn off lights on. Landing lights on. Nose wheel light to take off. Alright, before takeoff checklist is complete, we're going to go ahead and clear ourselves onto the runway. line ourselves up all right 
right now. I don't know. Start. Startle fifty percent. Stabilized. Release. Flex set. Keep forward pressure. That nose wheel in contact with the ground. Ooh. Release that pressure. One, rotate. Pause the rate, gear up. Climb thrust set. Lower the nose a bit. Get a little speed. Be checked, flaps one. Check flap zero. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and disarm our ground spoilers, turn off our nose wheel light, and wait, turn off light. Let's go ahead and turn on our autopilot. All right, so our kernel was started, throttle, brake release, flex set, got ground spoilers disarmed, nose wheel lights, runway turn off, lights off, autopilot on. Climb to tent, flaps retracted. Engine mode is normal, anti ice is not required. Landing lights will retract at 10,000 feet. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and clear us up to 10,000 feet. So, we're not at cruise, but we're cruise adjacent. How is everybody doing today? You see, our transition altitude is 5,000 feet, so we need to set standard barrow. How's everyone doing today? I know I've got to be one of very few people that are actually streaming to X-Plane right now. I don't expect to get a lot of viewers right now because of Microsoft. Um, it looks great. It absolutely blows this out of the water visually. But without any study level planes, it's really hard to suggest. 
That's that's where I'm at right now with it. It's a good simulator with some problems, obviously. It's only been out, like, what, two weeks, three weeks? Um, that said, it needs study level aircraft. Right now, I can't recommend it for anybody who wants to fly airliners. If you're fine just flying on uh, GA, then this, uh, you know, Microsoft Flight would be great for you. That's not what we're dealing with here. Um, that's not what we're, we're, we're flying on this stream. Uh, and unfortunately, that is a thing that I've seen a lot lately, is... Um, uh, so many channels are completely changing their content. They used to be nothing but airliners. Now they're nothing but GA. And they're not saying anything about it. They're just kind of letting it slide under the radar because they want to please Big Daddy Microsoft. And I understand that. I'd love to please Big Daddy Microsoft. Um, but I'm too small for Big Daddy Microsoft to worry about me. So I can tell you what you actually need to know. And that is, one day, one day, Microsoft Flight Simulator will be the new simulator. One day, it will completely replace X-Plane 11. Um, within certain margins. There's, there's certain uses for which X-Plane will be superior mostly having to do with community-generated content. Um, but that said, this... I don't think X-Plane is ever going to go away. Obviously. Um, it's always going to have its place. It's always going to have its niche. But Microsoft Flight is visually stunning. The... Atmospheric modeling is phenomenal. The uh, aircraft themselves are beautiful. I've seen some of the scenery, the, the custom scenery that's come out. And dear God, I am absolutely blown away. Um, I cannot even explain some of the Orbex stuff. And I've seen some people developing this stuff, too. And it is insane. I saw somebody that was working on a Hong Kong. Uh, I'm not sure what development team they're with, but just looking at it. And, and apparently, it is a lot easier to work with than existing tools for either X-Plane or FSX. Um, and it actually makes the... the the process of developing scenery is a lot easier than it was with either program. Which means more custom scenery, better custom scenery, maybe even cheaper, I don't know. I, look, I don't pretend to understand everything about this business. I don't even pretend to understand everything about the airplane. Um, but that said, it seems like there's going to be a lot of content for this. And that as more third-party developed content starts coming out, Microsoft Flight Simulator is just going to get better. But if airlines are what you're looking for, then right now, save your money. Save your money. Um, if you can find somebody who's still doing any deals where you can buy it on X-Plane and get a discount on the Microsoft Flight Simulator and you are just, just have some money burning a hole in your pocket, go ahead and do that. It's going to be probably a year. It's going to be six months to a year before we have anything study level. Um, <clears throat> at Aprox, we're not quite ready to clear ourselves to 24,000 yet. Um, we don't have anything study level yet. And we're probably not going to for another year. Um, 
I know that they are working on making the A20NX be, or A32NX be study level. There's only so much they can do. And I understand that, and I'm not upset with them for not being able to do more. Um, but they are limited severely by Asobo and what they have done in order to cut corners. Um, for instance, in the actual A320, on the MCP here, there is a separation between these two sides of the MCP. They're, they're essentially they're two different displays. Uh, and there's a piece of, of plastic right here between HDG and VS, right? In the Asobo version of the A320neo, they just put a little blue line that's textured onto the display. So it looks like they put a digital blue line, like, the, like there is a blue light on this display <laughs> that shows up here. And it's clearly different from the texture here in here, it doesn't look the same as this plastic. It just looks like somebody tried to shortcut it, which is exactly what they did. Um, they were absolutely shortcutting. So, um, let me take a look at this again. I'm, I'm very nervous about this. Okay, it's starting to show correctly now. Extra time, extra fuel. Okay. That's that's starting to look right. What was it doing here? I, I still can't I can't still look at in it. I feel like it did something and maybe it's only in the initialization B screen. That's what I'm concerned. I'm not hearing any of the ding dongs. And that's bothering me. I like the ding-dongs. Like, I made fun of Microsoft Flight for not having the ding-dongs. And now I don't have it on my TOLUS. I need to figure out what's going on there. Okay, so now that we're making this turn, i go ahead and clear us up to 24,000. Which is our flight level? Yeah. That is our cruise altitude, so we're going to go ahead and clear ourselves up. Throttles are going to spool up, and we are going to climb up to flight level 240. Altimeters are set. We are at cruise phase, but we are not at cruise altitude. Important to note the difference. By the way, guys, I just want to thank you so, so much for being here. Um, even if you don't chat, if you're just lurking, if you're hosting, whatever you're doing, thank you so much for being here. I, I do appreciate it a lot. Um, I really enjoy making these flights for you guys. Hopefully, um, hopefully you have fun with them. That's really what I want out of it, is for you guys to have fun, enjoy the thing that I have passion for as much as I do. I really want that for you guys. Um, and to understand a little better what's going on. Oh, oh, I forgot to play my thing. Okay, we're going to do a safety briefing real quick. I'm going to shut my mouth, and we're going to do a quick safety briefing. Um, I can find it. Okay, we're going to do a quick safety briefing, and I will be right back as soon as it's done. Probably going to take about six minutes.
Keep in mind that 80% of accidents happen in the first three minutes and the last eight minutes of flight. So that's what it would be wise to keep your shoes on and put your laptops away and stay focused. The safest seats on this plane are over the wings closest to the emergency exits. If you're not in one of those right now, here's what you can do to help ensure your survival. Look where your nearest exit is. Now count the rows between you and that exit. If the cabin was full of smoke, or upside down, or full of smoke and upside down, how would you get to that exit? Take a moment to visualize yourself doing that right now. Now look at your seatbelt. I know all of you know how to use it, but that's because nothing is making you lose your shit right now. It's common for people in emergency stress situations to try and open that thing by pressing a button that's not actually there, like a seatbelt on your car. So take a moment to imagine yourself lifting that flap in an emergency. In fact, do it right now just to get used to the motion. Emergency evacuations on the runway are more common than crashes. In the event of something like an engine fire, we need to get you all off the plane in about 90 seconds. This means you need to leave your fucking bags in the overhead bins and get off the damn plane in a quick and orderly manner. Those bags will bring the evacuation to a virtual halt. My first officer and I will be trying to get off this plane, and the last thing we want is to be cockpit blocked by your roll-off. Now, you're probably well aware there's a life jacket under your seat, but forget about it. They're less likely to save your life than those little airline cars. Sure, there was a famous 2009 emergency water landing on the Hudson, but there were boats on hand immediately and nobody actually needed the life vests. There was a flight that ditched in the Caribbean in 1970 where 40 lives were likely saved by the vests, but there was also one off the coast of Ethiopia in 1996 in which many passengers put them on too early and couldn't get out of the flooded fuselage. To put it another way, if we replaced those life vests with a box of chocolates, it wouldn't alter your survival odds. Let's take a second to talk about those oxygen masks. Here's the thing. If we lose cabin pressure at a fairly low altitude, no big deal. You can breathe just fine. If we lose cabin pressure at cruising altitude, we can't. If that happens, Here's what I'm required to do by law. I'm going to push the nose of the plane into an emergency descent. It's going to feel like a roller coaster drop, and it's going to scare the crap out of you. But it's not dangerous. I practice. Also by law, I need to notify air traffic control as well as the airline, and I need to do all that before I can get on the microphone and tell you what the hell is going on. So don't be surprised if you don't hear from me for a bit. I'm just doing my job, and you're going to be fine. For those of you who don't manage to get your masks on in time, you'll probably pass out and then wake up in a minute or two when they get the plane to a lower altitude. You want to know what the biggest danger is? The biggest danger is actually that your luggage or those deep three bottles you purchased in the overhead compartment will fall out when you open it and hit someone on the head. There are actually several thousand reported injuries from this every year in the United States alone. By contrast, the FAA only reports 58 or so serious injuries from turbulence. So one could easily make the case that you should, you should be handing you a helmet and skip the seatbelts. Another big risk is the drink cart. Seriously. It weighs over 100 kilos when fully loaded, and every year passengers get their elbows, knees, and feet broken when the drink cart slams into them. So keep your arms and legs tucked away. Why have an airline put some safety padding on the drink cart? I don't know. Maybe because you're screaming at the attendants for your chicken being bland, or your drink not being The same goes for spilled fruit, coffee, and teapots and cups of plates. Every year, some poor passengers get hot coffee or tea in their crotch when there's a bit of turbulence, but until the airlines fix this, I'm afraid you're on your own. Now, you're probably wondering how can this bucket of bolts stay in the sky if we can't get the AV system or the latch on the tray to work properly. To be honest, sometimes wonder that as well. The stats speak for themselves. The actual risk of dying in a plane crash is 1 in 11 million, according to the Harvard School of Public Health 2006 study, so you're far more likely to be struck by lightning or killed by a shark. And it's certainly much safer than driving. Right after 9-11, many were scared to fly. 12 to 20% fewer people flew. 
But because more people move driving trips instead of flying, a German professor estimated that an extra 1,595 people died in car accidents in the year after 9-11, just in the U.S. Just a little reminder that we'll probably keep the seatbelt sign on for nearly the entire flight, because our flight crew doesn't want to be bothered in the galley, and they definitely don't like trying to squeeze by you in the aisles. That or I forgot. Either way. Anyway, please sit back and relax while we take forever to serve you a drink and a barely editable meal, and then leave the tray on your table, making it nearly impossible for you to squeeze out of your chair and into the toilet. Looking forward to flying the salty skies with you again. And welcome back, everybody. Thanks so much for listening to my safety briefing. Hopefully it entertained and informed. That's kind of the point. Um, yes, I am trying to inform you just a little bit. Uh, I don't want to be too heavy-handed about it. Put our music back up. Turn this down a hair. Just so that you can hear me and the aircraft better. Speaking of which, let's turn the aircraft up a bit. Alright, and we're going. And I think I might have figured out the sound thing. Yeah, buddy, there are those ding-dongs. Turns out V2 is just working for some reason where it wasn't before. are over Hotel Mike Mike almost take a little bit of a look forward all right so it looks like we're going to be starting our descent uh, just before Sonza take a look at our charts and make sure that that is accurate so we're coming in through Norku Sonza so we need to be at or below flight level 280 which we're at 240 and 280 to 300 knots. Let's make sure that it's got... Oh, we need to enter our destination data. Sure thing. Let's go to our initialization. Let's grab this descent wind. Uh, cruise wind. Descent wind. Yes! Yes! Okay. So let's go to descent approach. Go ahead and use our ISCS system to look at EHAM's METAR. And what this means is the airport EHAM, that's Amsterdam Schiphol, uh, the time that this was generated was 01.20.55 Zulu, that's 1.20 a.m. 55 seconds Zulu time. The wind is from 3.30 at 1 knot. Temperature is 11. Cav okay, so we've got no uh, nothing to worry about as far as clouds or anything. 10, 19. This set 200 is our minimums. I know it's probably not realistic, but I don't actually know what the minimums are. So, uh, one knot, it doesn't matter what runway we're landing. And I was unable to find any place that would tell me what the active runway is at any given airport. So, um, we're just going to go with what our flight plan says. Hope that's okay with everybody. It's not, that sucks to be you. Okay, so we're going to go in and look at our flight plan. Norku, we need to be at... 280 to 300 knots. Alright, so we need to put in a vertical. Yeah, and then we need to be at 300 knots, speed constraint. Uh, 
You know what? I'm gonna go to speed constraint. No, not at Sunset. At Norku. I'm gonna do 280, just to make sure. Only affecting after, so let's let's do this to 300. All right. Oh, what 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 you doing? Why why are you so specific about being at 335 at Norku? No, I'm not. I'm not happy. Not happy. Honestly, I want to start slowing down. I don't know why you want to be so damn particular. Let's go down to 300. I want to go ahead and slow down now. Because I don't have anyone behind me. Otherwise, I would be worried about that. But I'm flying offline. Uh, we may possibly wind up doing some VATSIM. I'm not sure. I'm not sold on doing that quite yet. There we go. Now everything seems to be figuring out what I want it to do. No. No, it, it just hacking doesn't want to do what I want it to do. It's okay. It's okay. I can force it to do what I want it to do for now. Once we're past Norku, then I'll be able to, to be a little more giving with it. Not sure why we need to be at 300 by Norku, but we do. Alright, so landing elevation is auto. Mikdu arrivals, performance approach, top of descent winds. All been set. FC altitude. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go down to. Our first. 7,000. There we go. Now it's being appropriate. Thank you, airplane. All right, and now we are descending. Let's see. Work. I've got no restrictions at Sonsa. No restrictions at Robis. No restrictions at Oscar. I do need to be at seven zero halfway R tip. And then what approach are we doing? Um Eham three six right.
27. Six right. Alright, so we're gonna be We're going to be coming from We're going to be from We're flying directly into Amsterdam Schiphol Then we're going to head South directly over the runway. That look like what I've got. Uh, this is very weird. Six three six. Okay, this is not correct. Is... Okay, um... All right, so what we're gonna do is... I think I'm going to try and fly this manual. I think once we hit our tip, I'm going to try it manual. Are we speeding up? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why are we speeding up? No, no, no. Bad airplane. Be looking off over here to the left. Because I'm looking for Skipple. Not see the airport. Might be like right over there.
Oh boy. Look at this map real quick. Might be somewhere in this vicinity. Okay, um, hmm. So we're going to go down to three thousand. I'm going to do this a little bit differently because I'm going to try and do it a little closer to how the actual procedure works. But... <laughs> I'm just going to do my best. <laughs> I can't promise it's going to be good. Apparently we're supposed to fly until we are just north of the airport. Not that airport. Where are you, Skipple? And then we're going to fly over it. Circle around, straighten out. Should be like up this way. I'm just going to do my best and fly it manually. It's it's just the best I can do. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun, guys. You're going to watch me fail. Such a weird way. <gasps> there it is. It's the airport, I think. I think that's Amsterdam. All right, all right. So we're doing we're doing a little better. Look at. I think from our tip, we were supposed to head directly to the airport. So I think I'm actually doing this wrong. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. Um, can we direct to EHEM? Nope. 
fine, that's fine. What's the... Runway heading on? Okay, final approach course is going to be 004. That means we need 176. And we're ready to make our turn. This down to two three zero. Turn this one seven six. No, we're too far out. a little less of an intercept. Oh, okay. He checked flaps one. Let's try and not fuck this up. We're definitely going to fuck it up, but let's try not to. Sorry, I'm working with Figures in my head, I'm trying to do the math on this intercept and my turn rate. Thank you. Now should be good. Seven six. Come on. Come on. Nope. Nope. Too much. Too far to the left. Go flaps two. It looks like I don't have any scenery for Skipple, which is really a failure of X-Plane. One, 
and seven six. Still a little far to the left. This is still not correct. What? They put it on straight 180? Huh, okay. Well. Okay, so apparently decision height is 189 feet, and the airport elevation is negative 11 feet. Okay. Let's go down to 2,000. And then as we are over Eham, start our clock. I think I started my descent a little early. I thought I was already over Eham. Five hundred feet too low. Okay. All right. So we're gonna wait one minute. And then we're gonna turn to one three one. No. That's just all we're going to be able to do, is our best. I'm trying to remember the how to do this procedure. I have heard it one time. Ah. Uh. Left to one three one. We're going to fly for one minute.
and then we're gonna swing right back to zero zero four. If I'm right, that should put us online with the runway. If I'm remembering <laughs> this procedure, which I'm definitely not, just so we're clear, I am definitely not. And yet, I seem to have followed it pretty well. If this lines up, guys, guys, I'm going to need palms in chat. Laps three. No. Okay. I was very close. I was very, very close, y'all. Alright, let's, uh... Landing lights on. Actually get everything turned on. Break, flaps one. Approach, I just tuned. If you wanted to like look and glide slope capture, um, we are not captured. down signs on and check that's full All right, ladies and gentlemen, we actually did really well there. I am very pleasantly surprised. 
go ahead and turn those brake fans on because I'm not sure how bad they are. 210. Not bad. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Amsterdam Skipple. Lights retracted, ground spoilers disarmed, engine mode normal, flaps retracted, APU master on, APU start, and go ahead and come on. Normally there'd be a gate agent or something here to let me know when I'm in position. I think that seems good. Nope. Not even a little. That jetway does definitely seem like it's a bit too close. Perfect. Brain on HD is on ND is off. Brake fan is on, even though we don't need it. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. Parking checklist. Park brake pressure check green, which we look good. Simulator pressure is good. Uh, parking brake on. Anti ice off. Not necessary. AP bleed on. <clears throat> Engine one and two master off. Runway turn off lights are off, wing lights off, nav and logo off, beacon off. Those wheel lights off, seat belts off, laps time stop. Oh, these brakes are hot. What happened? It's only 320, but we still should turn it on for a little bit while we've still got it. Seatbelts are off, elapsed time stopped. Fuel pumps all off. Transponder to standby. McDo's, we're not going to worry about dimming. Brake fan off. During the aircraft for the day. Uh, park brake is on. A deer's can come off. Exterior lights all off. APU bleed off. APU master off. Emergency exit light off. No smoking light off. Battery one and two off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Amsterdam Skipple. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and not do an additional flight today. Uh, I hope you guys will forgive me. I wanted to keep today's experience be exactly the same as last week's flight where we did nothing but the flight so the uh, length of the videos should also uh, show you something about how simple it is to get off the ground to get on the runway to get in the air and to get to the destination when you're flying on X plane versus Microsoft right at this moment so thank you guys so much for being here uh, next week, I will try to go for the full two hours minimum. Uh, might be planning something, um, planning some memes. I think we're going to plan some memes. We're going to go to Mongolia, I think. Um, we're going to be doing some Eastern flying. And uh, once again, thank you guys for being here. If you've missed this program, 
Ladies and gentlemen, I am on YouTube now. I have been uploading these videos to YouTube for two weeks already. And now, mind you, there is a little bit of a delay. By a little bit, I mean a lot, okay? Um, we are... I'm, I'm not going to say that we are a certain number of weeks behind, because that's not exactly how I'm doing it, right? Right now, I'm staggering my releases of Microsoft Flight content versus X-Plane content. So, um... So essentially, like this this episode and last week's episode are gonna be one one after one another, um, and I, I am gonna put those together. But just before that was our first time in in Microsoft Flight, and just before that was I think flying uh, from Denver to KCI, uh, and then next week I think is going to be this week's is going to be. Um, Frankfurt to Schiphol in F Microsoft Flight. Next week is going to be Amps uh, uh, Frankfurt to Schiphol in X-Plane, which is today's flight. Uh, the week after that is going to be KCI to Dallas Love. Um, so it, it's, it's a little all over the place, but we are several episodes delayed. Um, they're not going to come out necessarily in the order in which they were aired uh, or originally recorded. But I will be releasing them all. Um, if you are listening to me and you are on the YouTubes, please jump over to twitch.tv slash attack. You can see that uh, link will be down in the description. Uh, go ahead and follow me there so you can see when I go live and watch me there as it happens. Be a part of the conversation. If you talk in chat i will absolutely be answering and you will hear that on youtube later um if you also haven't done so already hit the subscribe button um you know what you can do that in either place you could do, i would be more than happy to take your five dollars at uh twitch and i would be more than happy to take your your simple subscription at youtube so you'll see every time that I drop one of these, I drop them every Friday at 12 o'clock at 0 o'clock Central. So midnight Central, first thing on Friday morning, you will always see a video from me. Um, and that's also a rack attack, A-R-A-K-A-T-K, at YouTube. Uh, so... Also, hit the like button, comment. I do read these things, and I will try to react to every comment that I get. I appreciate every like that I get, and I appreciate every sub that I get. I am very young. I am very new. I am just starting on YouTube, and I will do my best to be able to interact with each and every one of you. I also have a Discord, which I will start putting down in the description as well. And you can see those if you are currently with me in um, Twitch, you can just hit exclamation point Discord to my bot. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Follow me wherever you go. I, I have the Instagram. I have the Twitter. I have, I have everything. I'm having some problems with getting into some of them. And I'm not at a point yet where I am ready to post that content all the time. Um... But I will be doing my best, and um, I promise that I will be looking into getting you guys more content for all of those uh, social medias. Uh, once I have gotten to a point of, of automation, I will get to the point of at least posting go-live notifications there. So thank you guys so much for being here. I will see you guys probably tomorrow, definitely next week. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. Good night. All right, and for those of you who are only watching on YouTube, I am going to start giving you a little bit extra here at the end of my flights. Obviously, um, I usually forget to do my... Uh, I usually forget to do my uh, replays. Guess what? I don't have to remember them. As long as I haven't closed the simulator... And that means I can record them for you guys. 
So let's go ahead and make sure that this thing is totally buttoned up. We're going to go to our Tolis menu, ground services, and we are going to close all of these doors. Because God knows what it's done. Make sure, ah, uh, see, see. This is why I want to make sure those doors are closed. Okay, that's having some issues. Let's jump in the cockpit, turn on ground power, and Soul is ground services. Let's go ahead and external power. Turn that on, see if we can't get those doors to close. Yeah, that's all it needed. It needed a little bit of power. Those are electrical things. All right. And now let's go ahead and flight toggle replay mode. And then we're going to jump back here. And we're going to watch this. Let's start with from the power view. That's us nose diving out of nowhere. So we should be about making the turn. Whoa. Whoa, where did we, where, where are we? Okay, hold up, hold up. <laughs> we got teleported. I don't know why we got teleported. That is not a tower. Guys, come on. Give me a little break. <laughs> This is, this is not a runway. <laughs> oh, guys. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna go to a circle. Okay, so this was when we lowered the gear. Nope. Okay, here's us on final. This is us on final, so we're gonna go ahead and watch it from here because this is what we can do, guys. Look at those slats. Where are we at? Oh, we are nose diving very close to the runway. I am genuinely shocked that I was able to land this as softly as I did, because we were very, very high. We just barely blew through the uh, glide slope and just never caught it. All right, here we go. See us start to level out a little bit. nosing back down because I shallowed it too much. Here we go. And this is, you can see the runway just a little bit underneath us, I think. And here we are. And that's touchdown. Slats, reversers, flaps, speed brakes, everything coming out. All right, 
let's back it up a little bit. Look at this from our touchdown zone. I don't like the fog in uh, X-Plane 11. That's just, there's nothing I can do about that. I don't understand why it does so much fog, even in cavalcade conditions. This is just what it is. And we should be able to see ourselves any minute now. There we are. Really, really high. Alright, so we are at the thousand foot. Seriously, doubt this is a thousand. Probably closer to here. Alright. So here we are coming in. We're definitely a little high. <laughs> you can see us def descending quite rapidly. That's even more nose down. For having completely done this against the book, uh, because I was split between following the, the flight plan and going by the book, Let's see, where did we land? I'm shocked at how well this turned out. And then there's a little bit of an early flare. Oh dear God, why? Why? God damn it, X-Plane. X-Plane, no! Why do you do this to me? Every goddamn time. One thing I hate about X-Plane's camera system is if you're controlling the camera, you're controlling the camera and you go off screen, then it just starts following your cursor. Okay, so I was definitely off laterally. But I estimated this is probably the, the actual thousand foot, not that. And I landed right on these. I mean, look at this, look at this, look at this. Wheels down. Wheels not down. Like, that is beautiful. It doesn't get better than that, folks. It doesn't get better than that. All right. So, guys, thank you so much for being here and for uh, joining me on YouTube. Thank you so, so much. And I will see you guys... Next Tuesday, I do these flights every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Central to 7 p.m. Central. Thank you, and have a wonderful week. Goodbye, YouTube.